throughout the group stage, we just felt learn from our mistakes and just continue to improve. Well, obviously we feel really good making the major, but uh, we, we all individually know we have a lot of work to do. The major is, you know, there's not going to be any room for mistakes or anything like that. Everybody has to play their absolute best, so we're going to go home and make sure we put the work in so that we can be the best team we can be. Hopefully, if we keep on improving and show that teams from NA can really compete at the top level, and I think we're starting to show that. Every time we play a top team, we're starting to like improve against them and really show that it doesn't matter like where you come from. It's just if you have a really good team and you just put in the work, it'll pay off. The thing that makes us really strong is just our team chemistry and we understand each other. Uh, we understand each other's play style, so that really helps. Um, you know, when a player is not performing so well, another player has the opportunity to step up. Everybody at one point can dominate a match on their own, which is really unique about us. We have five players that, in my opinion, can be star players. Words of confidence then from Optic suggesting there's no room for mess ups, but they are capable. It is the Green Wall versus the Pajama Ninjas now as we do go into our second game of Group B. Gentlemen, this is a game where finally we have, is this the closest North America are gonna have to, to picking up a, an opening best of one? Is this the best opportunity North America has? I mean, some has? people on the desk, so analysts actually think Team Liquid, they have some faith in them because of obviously the name power, you know, but I actually think if you look at the recent results, this is the one where at least you can go on the actual analysis of the results and the maps they're likely to play, and you can say Optic has their chances here. Now, again, if they if they have poor individual performances, that will obviously be the offset where we know NAP has fantastic players. But if Optic comes with their good game and they play with the kind of routine on the maps we expect them to, mm. I certainly think they have a chance here. I think it's a much slimmer margin than the names suggest. A chance, Blue? You think so too? Yeah, absolutely. We've already seen them upset against it before, so there's absolutely a chance for them to take it yet again, depending on what the map goes to. So it does revolve around that veto. I guess we can st start there. Yep. I mean, there's a reason that you've kind of highlighted that this being a close one. So I guess let's just start with the maps. Let's start there. So I'm actually expecting at the end, just to give you a preview, that we're going to end up on Cobble or Train. They're the maps that they've played okay. a lot each. So actually, Nip throws me a curveball. <laughs> <laughs> here. here's it. what's interesting, okay? Because NIP banning Cobble here, Cobble is actually Nip's second best map. So they've just said, let's get that right out of there. The map of Cash Ban, you have to do that if you're the guys from Optic because it's the best map for Nip. It's the, they're one of the best in the world on it. Yeah. So we're expecting at this point, other maps you want to get out. Nip actually banning out Train, again, is very shocking. This is, an, this is a classic exist one. He's banned out two of his best three maps himself. Overpass ban from Optic is very obvious. I mean, you just don't want to play that in general. It's not actually a Nip map particularly. I want to see here if Nip bans out Nuke. If they ban out Nuke, see, now we've left up Nuke and what is it? Dust 2. So here's the thing. Optic doesn't play Dust 2, and they've barely played Nuke. So I guess I understand it in that sense from Nip. Yeah. But the problem is, Nuke's a map they haven't played on LAN yet. And Dust 2's, it's in the middle for them, but it's not really a sick map for them either. So interestingly, Nip's gone away from the philosophy of, if you're the better team like Na'Vi, yeah. you want to play them on their best maps as well, because we're better than them. Nip's actually gone, you know what, we're going to go totally to something you never play and something we're all right on. So here's the problem with that. I understand, I actually agree with that in a sense, but not when it's Dust 2, because Dust 2 still is the classic upset map. So it's true it's not an optic map, but I do feel like you open the door a little bit for, for any random thing to happen on Dust 2. Yanko, a bit of a spanner in the works from NIP and the Vito? I feel they vetoed Cobble simply because it's the only map they lost to optic. So they're like, okay, we have three vetoes, we can get rid of that. I think that Threat is the one doing all the vetoes for NIP now. So I guess that they came into this having a, a clearer game plan. And yeah, it's kind of a fanatic type of a veto where you play towards your opponent's weaknesses rather than I mean, they have strengths. literally banned the three yeah. best maps for Optic, I'll say that. That's that's one of the things, too, with Optic. I mentioned this in the pre-show, in the uh, in the pre -show too, is that the unfortunate thing with Optic coming into this event is they lost Inferno, which was historically a really good map for them along with Train, and now they've lost that. So going over to Dust2 isn't necessarily going to be a great map for them. It's going to be relying on those individual performances, in my opinion. Just a couple of words, perhaps, Yanko, about Nuke. Like, they left that in. NIP were willing to play that. Wouldn't that have been a viable strategy for Optic if they've put some work in? Like, could, the, they, could they have rock, rock Definitely. Back? I mean, the map is still a, a bit random. Most of the teams play it like the old Nuke, and that map was CT-sided. So, you know, if Optic, you manage to win the T-Pistol, get a couple of rounds in, then CT-side is pretty straightforward. So, yeah, they probably had something prepared since they left it in the pool. Duncan, you know you know the map, you know the teams. Oh, yeah. It's time for predictions. Do you, I actually do you go ride the North American Eagle? Problem is, I've got to say... Don't ever ask me a question like that. <laughs> 
I have to go ahead and say that I do not actually think that this has got a chance of an upset now because it's not a map Optic plays. And then you add in all three of their comfort maps are up. That's the thing I was relying on for Optic is that they'd have the comfort factor and then individual performances could elevate them. I've got to figure with the frag as NIP have, they used to be very good on Dust2 when they had the Alu lineup. I think this is going to be a clear NIP win. Yeah, okay. I was actually going to say Optic for this best of one, but I didn't expect us to expect them to play a different map. Now, on, on, I think that Optic is also thrown uh, uh, off by this uh, veto from NIP, so I feel that NIP is now going to take it on us too. Just a team name, Blue. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with a nip on this one as well. Okay, so I mean, it's safe to say there's some belief in the green wall here on the desk. However, that map veto seems like Threat has already started to play this game and play it well as we're going to be going down on Dust2. Optic start on the CT side and your casters are ready for this one. It's time for the final game of Group B today and it will be Pansy and Moses who are going to be casting this one. Enjoy. All right, thank you so much. And yeah, a really curious veto coming out. Not what I expected, actually. Somewhere out there, there's someone with Photoshop skills who can put <laughs> Thorin on an eagle, riding in, riding that North American eagle. There's a picture out there of Thorin wearing stockings. We could so maybe combined. combine the two. That'd be phenomenal. Uh, but yeah, this is this actually is, uh, I, I think I, yeah. I agree with most of the desk saying this is going to be an NIP win. It is a great chance. Optic has shown good things, so this is kind of uh, one of, for me, um, as the, as the you know, generally highlighted NI fanboy, so I'm just, you know, interested to see what yeah. kind of level Optic is going to bring on this map, because we don't see it too much from them. Yeah, that's very true. And going back to the Optic point, if I'm completely honest, I thought this was probably going to be closer than the flip side Navi game because of Optic's recent performances and the maps that were expected to be played. But taken out of that comfort zone, I'm not sure what to predict because considering Optic's T-side was what really highlighted how good they were during the qualifiers, it was something that called out flip side drastically on train. It's been pretty well-rounded, to be fair. It's not just been mixed while having good games. A lot of the powers coming, you know, from Rush, which has been a big surprise. Daps having consistency, you know, Nafly as well. You know, a lot of these players having some very impressive performances on a relatively consistent basis. However, their CT side during the qualifiers was lacking a lot so we're gonna get them on a map that we're not sure of starting on the CT side there's a lot to be seen here for Optic and NIP on the other hand that you don't have to say much about them because if they played the Vita the way they did they surely have something in mind here yeah and the big thing about NIP is ever since Third has joined this team this is a, this is a squad that has slowed things down they've become very methodical um, you know a lot of the teams that I've talked to here I've just mentioned that you know NIP just they do that slow map control style now so it will be interesting to see how Optic's going to be able to handle that not a lot of teams uh, at the moment NA who, who are able to exercise that map control style with any kind of effects so this might be something new that they've seen Rush you, I mean you mentioned he's one of the guys who's been stepping up massively in the NA scene as an NA player and he's going to have to have another big game for them here and already NAF down to 12 12 HP, tries to get aggressive towards long, and NIP pushes him back early. Pit there, gonna be looking for a little bit of something towards mid, and the three play stack from Optic, well placed so far, might make it a little tricky on the retake towards A if NIP do eventually build towards that mana. The Glock train does like, kind of uh, play to the hands of that so far, and they've been completely allowed up Cat Scott free. You've got Naf sitting on the site, who's pretty much the linchpin now, who's already on 12 HP here. Yeah, this is this is a misread from Optic. The fact that Naf is so low and they haven't rotated anyone over, and actually he's caught out. He's out in the open. Pit's gonna take him down. They've even got one member Freiburg watching the flank in lower B, and actually he hears the footsteps, so he's gonna get a little bit more aggressive. But now he's just swarmed. But he's got the intel. He sees three members of Optic coming up towards Catwalk, and NIP have plenty of time to readjust their setup. And the danger being there's still a deagle with Forrest, and on the other side, they've used their utility right about now. That smoke's come in, the nade's been put down. Pit doesn't even need support on this one. He's doing the work with that USPS, and get right just flies down, denies, daps a chance at it. And an extremely clean start from NIP, and it looked like a complete misread, as you said, from Optic then. Yeah, maybe I, they must have uh, had some idea that something, like maybe studied into some pistol rounds and NIP might have just changed something up on them, but that was four players devoted for the majority of that round towards the middle and towards the B bomb site. And they just never rotated anyone off. Even when they, you know, they had the intel, they had to have known with that many players in mid that NIP was working up catwalk. Maybe not expecting it to to come out that quickly to be that that assertive of a hit. But still, when you leave that players in one spot of the map for that long, someone like Threat is going to catch onto that and counter it perfectly as they did. Uh, a little bit of cat, a oh, short aggression coming out between Mixwell and Rush. Bearing in mind, Exist and Pit are both in low vital, so almost predicting this as well, or at least playing to it. You can see the amount of flashes dedicated towards pushing anyone away from there, trying to maybe get a glimpse towards mid. Again, this slow building style is all-encompassing so far from NIP, pushing players off, not allowing players anywhere near. You can see the close and methodical style of clearing out these corners. Rush could have a bit of a shot there, but get right pushes him back. No real massive commitment yet. Again, building the way up short, Pit working through mid. But there's Rush, Mixwell, and Daps now, waiting towards A if 
they even commit to this. These anti-eco scenarios or anti-force buy scenarios, whatever you want to call them, is, is one of the areas in which NIP has really been stellar since Threat came in. Get right does get tagged by the scout. Mixwell gonna try and do more. Actually, that's a nice headshot onto Freiburg. Get right trying to let his teammates with higher HP go, so he can't be taken out. And damage is being done by Mixwell. He's got an opportunity for more. Get right brought down to 17. There's a chance here for Optic if they can find one more kill pretty quickly. They'll have an they'll have an avenue back into this retake. They need to do it quite fast. Forrest is going to be sticking out on this side. Get right to denied one. Forrest dives in, and that's going to keep that threat in check. Mixwell even gets found as well with the UMP at quite some distance. You can see the massacre that just happened on that A-Ram. Such a tough spot for the CT players. So quite brave, though, for NIP to go for the challenge on that one. But it's Forrest being quite the linchpin with that UMP. Does get denied in the end by Daps. But these players being low isn't going to make any odds into this one. Now, they can survive. They still keep the rifle on exist. And it's a wrap from Pit to close the round down. So a little bit closer than maybe expected by NIP. There was a chance there, but mostly provided by Mixwell dealing that damage. Yeah, really nice shot. It, it slows it down a lot. It just gives him a chance to get back into it. Doesn't work out from there. Forrest with that UMP has some precision kills. Three quick headshots from him. Builds up some bonus money as well. That bodes well also. I mean, just the fact that he's able to just land those shots so quickly like that. He's one of those players. So much is spoken about Forrest and just the mechanical nature of his aim, how, how good it can be, and just how scary he is when he hits that peak. And if that's any indication, this could be a long half for Optic. But a real big investment into these rounds, saving up for the gun rounds. They don't want to put themselves at a disadvantage in that fourth round. No reason to be missing any of the nades they're going to need. So, going to be taking over long. Why not with the rifles against what at best is going to be a couple of upgraded pistols, maybe a touch of something more, but never much into these rounds. You're never going to get away with anything, really, at this point. But if they can maybe get a gun away, that'd be brilliant. If they can maybe stop the plant, that'd be ideal, but that's not going to happen here. Mixwell gets caught out instantly. Get right checking his corners. This is what you said. It's, it's the fact they're so meticulous in checking these, in the way they play into these anti-ecos, and they know what they're going to be looking for. They very much play them like their gun rounds. You can even just see, I mean, not even making sure they use all their utility, not even leaving anything up to chance, and also letting the SMGs go first, letting them make the point of contact and get that bonus money to build up the bank. You can see Get Right just <laughs> runs out of bullets, but Rush does the same. He's going to get away. Nothing left for Rush. There's Forrest with the Tech 9. 3 0 quickly for NIP going into the first gun round. So Omtik going to have to just reset mentally after that. A little bit of a. Uh, not, not a great start, but. You know, you can recover on this one. This is the interesting thing about Optic, because we always talk about Mixwell. We always talk about Mixwell with the AWP, but on CT sides, NAF is the one generally picking it up. So it is a little bit weird when all the discussion is around Mixwell and his op and the impact it can have, and then you see NAF grab it. But this is pretty standard for them. The issue, I mean, only three rounds in, NAF, Rush, and Stan, all with zero kills at the moment. And NIP spreading out into a default forest out towards Long. He's got the AWP for them on the T side. Doesn't want to commit too much to that fight. Takes a shot, doesn't get anything, and he just falls away. These are the ones that, well, these rounds, should I say, are the ones that I want to keep my eyes on. How do NIP take that control again? You, you, you can look at teams to give you the masterclass. You can look at your Navis. You can look at uh, various others who play that T-side exceedingly well. Or at one point during you know CS history, have had sheer dominance here. But see NIP just building themselves throughout mid, not taking any too, you know too many big risks. Forrest to take a chance at long, but then backed away instantly, not overstaying welcomes. And you can see Rush there sitting extremely deep towards the site. You've got Mixwell dancing between watching that cross, maybe looking to put a pop flash into play if he needs to, and Daps still playing on long. But NIP have a, low build, you know, a, a slow build into this round. The smokes are going in just about now, but let's see if they commit off the back of it, and where do they commit to? At least Stan is in CT spawn, so he'll be able to have a quick rotate, but Freiburg's going to hop down, looking for Mixwell. There's one flash, and he's just going to come right through the smoke, and actually, I don't know, it doesn't even matter. Force drops him. Rush still over in Goose. He gets the kill onto Exist, but now they know he's here, and Daps wins that battle at long. So all of a sudden, now Nip have to make something happen. It's Pit. Daps cannot cover him wrapping up that ramp, and there's still one in the middle, and it's Get Right, obviously, with the Lurk watching the flank. Stan's going to be close. He's able to find that kill. A miss by Forrest gives him the opportunity. But it's going to be Pit to be the last man on the side itself. Get Right has to make a quick play, but he only has the UMP, so still far from ideal, but he sets up Pit, who makes the absolute most of it. A quick deny towards D Daps means is down to Stanislaw. 1v2. He's going to put the foot at least in the right place for now, and now be left in the 1v1. Get Right with the UMP. Stanislaw doesn't have a kit at the moment, so time's going to be of the essence, and Stan's going to have to go look for this one. He's going to find the kill, but he will be able to get back, I think, just in time if he made the hop up. And, well, it's going to be a close one, but in the end, the retake, no, he doesn't have it. No, not at all. He, wow, he needed Stan. to find a kit, and he just waits it too long. Oh, the kit was on long. Get right just freezes him. Oh. He was searching for it. You could see he wanted it, but Get right plays it really, really well. Doesn't even jump. He just, he just trusts the fact that Stan isn't going to stick that defuse. 
And it's all Pit, that impact play. Those two kills that he gets in that two on three are massive. Allowing Get Right, he takes out the opera first, so Get Right can even make progress onto the bomb site. Oh, that's pretty devastating. Again, he kept the AWP, but nothing to build around it with, apart from a couple of Deagles, maybe some P250s. The CT side looking pretty weary at this point, and Forrest going to be given a chance there. You can see the swing out there on the peak, but no one really going to find much from it, and Stanislaw going to keep himself on the AWP at this point and just play around as much as he can. And try and find some way of building themselves into this round, at least do some damage, find anything he can, but... Look how far back NIP is sitting as well. They are waiting for this sort of P to come out. And there you go. Absolutely oh. shut the hell down. Yeah, that is no good. And the bummer about that as well is there, there was no one with him to be able to salvage that ADVP. They have pushed up Catwalk, but I mean, Freiburg is here now guarding the AWP. No one's going to be able to take it over. Rush is on the stairs. He's going to be next up. He's not found by Freiburg. Pitt's going to follow this up. He gets dinked, though, so he's forced away. And there's also going to be a flank coming in. Daps has pushed long. All four members of NIP are on Catwalk. They've got to be very careful careful how they progress from here. Uh, timing is everything, though. They've all just about moved up away from that barring pit, who's going to look around again. Gerard's coming back through as well. So Daps, that flank is all about timing here. He's going to pick up the AWP as well. So knows he's got a chance with this. Here we go, Daps. What can you do? Nothing. Had a chance there. there exactly right. He found the timing that he wanted. Just couldn't land the shot for us. I think knows there's someone in that smoke. He had to have heard him. But Mixwell is the AWP. He can do a little bit of damage, but it's not going to happen. 5-0 for NIP. They don't want the double ops set up. I don't really blame them, to be fair, it's T-side. It's not exactly something that everyone can run. And we have been seeing the double op on CT side every now and then. Pick can be, uh, has been picking up on occasion with Forrest, so. Well, now it gets interesting, because we just talked about the fact that NAF had been picking up the op. Well, they go right back to Mixwell in the next buy round. So maybe there's they may, they're trying to have some kind of tactic where maybe Mixwell's style of oping can be a little bit more effective. NAF isn't maybe confident in the kind of peak they want to do with it. So we'll just have to see. We'll find out. Mixwell did have a, a good spawn towards Long, didn't take it in the end. Going to be trying to support Daps and Rush, just getting their place out there. But it's Pitt who's already made it through. Freiburg's now joined him. The Flashes have kept the CT side completely blind to this. They're going to try and take a bit of a fight back. And that's about what's going to happen from it. You get absolutely destroyed. Pitt and Freiburg just sweep away whatever was going to be left at Long. You've got four players there. Now Mixwell, we've asked a lot of this player. Now he needs to deliver. And well, that's not happened either. Pitt and Freiburg continue their reign of dominance, just bullying their way through along. And surprisingly enough, this is a buy round from Optic. It just doesn't feel like one. Yeah, that that's exactly what it was. It, I mean, they were just a wrecking ball coming out long. And the thing was, the, the utility used by NIP to take control of long completely neutralizes all the all the flashbangs that Optic used. I mean, there were, there were moments when both both attacks and the defense were blind, but NIP just uses their flashbangs to get better angles. And you can just see now, 6-0, uh, we've seen Optic members get into some of these individual duels when these when these tactics are executed from NIP, and they're losing all of them. You think Stanislaw peeking catwalk with that ADP and just getting dropped by Freiburg immediately. Now at long, both him and Pitt have some sick shots to just take over that portion of the map very easily. So it's very worrying for Optic now. Yeah, Optic not in a good spot here. Going to be buying a little bit, keeping about 2.5 at the minimum. So everyone's a little bit of armor, an upgraded pistol, uh, you know, a flash with Rush and Stansel with a smoke. So about it. But every time I'm up here in these positions, you see them take a slower, more methodical play towards it. And why not? You don't want to fall into the traps here. You saw what happened last time. Freiburg was the one to meet them as soon as they pushed up on short. So again, if they go towards that, that would be unbearable to watch. But hopefully they've learned their lessons from now. Let's see what Optic do. Now they have a chance to maybe get back into it. But Exist, being ever so patient, is going to be fed the opportunity, but gets denied the follow-up there. Naf is going to find him. Can't recover the gun at all. Now backs away, and good damage from Mixwell finding Freiburg. So outweighting the opponents at this point. But now it's it's all about they have the intel. They knew one pushed B, who's low. They know one was aggressive on Catwalk, who's now low. Force and Get Right going to stick together here, going towards mid. They've got Daps pushed up right behind the door. Instead, just going to go right towards that B bomb site. And they know even in this situation, even though there's been kills out for the Optic side, it's still going to be very spread out defense. And maybe this is a slight mistake from Optic. One of the ways uh, with just pistols, group up. You have to be able to sacrifice some portion of map control to have the advantage in numbers with these pistols. Naf might be able to catch one off guard, boost it up, but I, he made a step there. Garrett's actually doesn't initially see him, gets dinked, but he does find the kill. Here's Daps coming in, and he gets dropped as well. So a little bit of danger again for NIP, but they stabilize in the end. Yeah, really well stabilized so far. Gerard did get dinged down pretty heavily. He's down to 4 HP, but Rush finding a rifle could cause some damage, but then it's Forrest watching this peak. So again, not exactly an ideal situation you want to step into. 
and NLP have a lot left in the bank. So this is not an easy one for Optic at all. And there you go. There's that first nail in the coffin for this round, at least. And Forrest wants more. And he's going to get it. Mixwell gets removed. And NLP keep the slate extraordinarily clean so far. This is a very one-sided match for them. And Optic have been putting up some small fights here and there, but it's just been pretty much sparse overall as a collective. Well, now they switch to the double op setup. So the thought is if NIP is going to be running these slower tactical defaults, if they can get the op set up in positions, they might be able to pick one or two of them off, uh, maybe unawares, which hasn't worked out for them. Uh, you know, in those situations, Optic hasn't had any success. But now with two ops, at least Bixwell and Nafka will find an opportunity to maybe try and get that pick, just hold an angle, wait for someone to walk into the crosshair. The other option is to get aggressive, which they haven't done yet. And there it is. Freiburg just drops Naf, although he is hit through the edge of the door, so it doesn't do... I mean, he's not a 22. It doesn't do the standard leg shot, but that's disappointing. Mixwell as well lands a shot through the wall. Very frustrating here for Optic. I don't know if they know to the extent of how frustrating, but they will certainly, towards the end of this, just seeing Get Right and Freiburg alive is probably going to be winding them up a little bit at this point after such a rocky start. But Rush is going to have to pick up the pieces and play towards mid to some degree, leaving the likes of Stanislaw or Mixwell to play the sides, and then Daps pushed up by Long. But... Still one minute on the board and a great deal to play with here for NIP. They've got all the mollies they need. They have the smokes to hand. There's so much to play into. Well, they, can, they have everything they want with that one pick and they slow things down. Looking at the minimap, everyone on the optic side is so very spread out. No matter where NIP goes, it's going to be facing off against a very isolated defender. Daps is going to have no backup. Mix was to watch Cat. He'll have no backup. Rush and CT spawn. Again, no backup. And same with Stan. So they're going to have to be very fast on the rotates in a situation where you're playing against a lurker like Get Right that you have to worry about. Pitt's going to be setting out a bit of tasty bait pretty much here. This is this is all a clever ruse because look where that bomb is. Look where the players are in mass. And Stanislaw has to be aware of this. Stan needs to be prepared. Rush has put himself in a good spot, but he gets mowed down. Now Stan's in trouble. He's got two players possibly coming up B-ramp. He's not sure if they're coming or not, so he takes the fight. Three players through tunnel. Make it four now. And now Stan just takes his time in a little bit. Too much time was taken. Exist gets himself into the site. It's theirs. It's taken over. Daps and mixed. Well, just, can, just sit back and watch now. There's nothing they can achieve in this. That, that's the brilliance of NIP when they have this man advantage, the pressure that's put onto the B bomb site isn't, isn't, isn't devised to, to take over the B bomb site. It's devised to force Rush out of position, force him into that rotation where there's two members of NIP waiting for it. That's the logical area where the rotation is going to come from. And then they can just punish that, and then the B bomb site is just entirely open for the taking from there. It makes it so much easier. So brilliant play from NIP, and you can just see Optic has no idea what's hitting him right now. Yeah, Forrest being boosted up on the site, trying to find Mixwell. You can see Daps there. Dancing with Freiburg, desperate to hold on to these guns, but NIP are hot on their trail and a bit of a turn of the flash there. Exist comes out of it. It's actually pit to find the go towards Daps. Mixwell trying to stay alive as long as he can, but none of it will be had. And my word, NIP. Putting on a clinic at the moment, eight to zero. Really are. And it's back because of the double op buy, because of that's that's the tactic that Optic wanted to run and everything gets obliterated. They're back into a situation. Actually, is that a miss I was, buy? I don't even know. That might be even a tilt buy at this point, but <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say it put them in this situation where they lost one and they're going to have to save, but NAF's already bought up the M4, so it'll be very curious what they decide to do because they're not going to have a lot of utility. So if they do end up going through with this buy just because of the, the small mistake, then they might just have to get aggressive because they're not going to have the utility to outlast NIP in a full round. They might have to choose a spot on the map. That's the other weakness of the default. I mean, it's very good for, you know, not getting too punished early on for being able to gather information and to kind of keep things masked. But since everyone's spread out because you have to watch so many different locations on the T side, there are opportunities to get aggressive and at least trade kills, at least take map control and B tunnels. And even if you lose someone, since NIP loses map control there, you kind of corral them towards the other side of the map. Certainly options are plenty here for Optic, but again, it's, it's how much do they read into this or play into this, should I say, rather than anything. It's Incredibly frustrating when you're at this sort of scoreline. You have to try and find adaptation. It's not easy to find adaptation once you're in these sort of spots. But these buys are curious to my eyes so far. I don't know what this was, so I'm, I'm wondering if it's I think it had probably to be a tactical a, timeout. But it had to be a little bit of frustration. I'll just buy an M4 to really show you how annoyed I am. <laughs> I don't know. All right, Naf. Well, he's going to have the 570. He's dropped that one out. Um, but coming into it, NIP are in the perfect spot. Money is pretty much robust as you like. Freiburg's a little bit lower than maybe he'd want to be, but that doesn't matter. There is, what, above 10K on three players, exist on 7K. They are completely set pretty much at this point. Whereas Optic, on the other hand, as you said, there are options available to them as to how they could maybe meet NIP at some point, but they aren't really utilizing that so far. They haven't gone through the motions of that. It seems a very much we're just going to sit back and take it here because we don't know what else to do, and that needs to change here because otherwise this scoreline is so 
one-sided, I don't see a recovery. Here's the tough part as well for, for Optic while they take this pause, because they have recently brought in a new coach. They brought in Devil Walk, who famously was the original coach of, of Fnatic, mm. uh, you know, a couple, couple of years back. Um, but because he was added so late to the roster, he's not able to actually stand behind them and coach, so yeah. he can't talk to them during this timeout. So they've spent, you know, whatever it might be, a week or, or maybe two weeks working with him, going over things, him trying to help them devise some tactics, teach him how to play, and he can't reiterate the points that he made during boot camp, during any of that practice, because he's not with them. So now they have to have that different voice. They kind of have to, for, you know, come up with something on their own. Yep, and we are back. It does seem, and that weird buy is just going to be in the back of my mind. I'm not sure what it was, but maybe it could be a question given to them down the line here if they do manage to pick up any victories throughout this tournament. But into the round we go, and it looks like NIP, again, not too sure what they're coming up against. They're going to be taking it at a very slow start being methodical and the smoke towards short could allow them to start playing some pressure games. Well, it's an interesting interesting idea from Optic because they know NIP's been taking mid control. They know they've been coming up catwalk at least initially in some of these rounds. So now what they have is a, they had a double stack in mid at the doors of the Santa's Law and Naf. They have Rush on catwalk, so it's a, a bit of a crossfire. Now they just choose to get aggressive and it works out. Rush gets one, Stan as well. Exist gets traded off and now... Oh, that's sick. Or Pith and Exist both fall at the end. So that's really well done from Optic out of the pause. That's beautiful. All right, well done, Optic. That was actually brilliant to watch. The the guts of just going, all right, let's just take the straight up fights and assume we'll win them. Is that that is one of those risks that has a massively high reward, but such a low chance of coming up with those sort of goods. You you want aggression throughout the map, but straight up fights, taking them through mid with pistols against four rifles is very rare. It works out, but it does. So Optic get the first round on the board, and now they're back. And look at all the weapons they've recovered. They're in a much better spot here to take the fight. But if you go by default rounds they've been playing, not so much brilliance too. But let's see if Forrest can maybe find a good start here. He's going to have the position to possibly take a shot if they go for it. But again, the stack in mid did work out before, but they had the support through B tunnels. They had the support through short, excuse me. So there's a lot of options left available. Now it's back in the hands of NIP to start really leading the pace in these rounds. Another pretty clever, small tactic from Optic. Mixwell boosted up on top just to try and pick off Freiburg at the top of mid over a smoke. Doesn't pan out for him. And now everyone's Got to fall away. Mixwell's going to be in CT spawn. Two members out towards long, so no actual presence at the A bomb site until Mixwell just rotates there now. Mixwell not having many straight up opportunities, I guess you could call them, in towards the later part of these games. They've been losing out quite drastically very early on on a couple of picks here and there. So, again, they do like to split two players down towards CT. They like to drop them down, but not going to be happening just yet. The mollies, the smokes are still being put down. And look at this beautiful set play from NIP. Ooh, a little bit of damage coming out from the knife there, but the boost comes out, so they're going to get on site a little bit, in a bit of a cheeky manner almost, and it's completely locked out of the vision from Optic. Bomb goes down. This is a brilliantly structured round, but now they need to hit the shots and rush. Already going to find Freiburg. Mixwell has a chance to find some play towards the A side, but doesn't expect Pitt to take the fight, and he's going to take another, but he doesn't come up with the goods that time. It's rushed to build back in again. 4v3 now, the opportunity, the chance is with Optic, but Forrest is not liking that. Not at all. He's going to go for more as well. Naf gets one kill into Exist. Force has got to hold on the site. And he gets dropped by Daps. It's just Get Right left. One on three situation. Naf walks right into the crosshair, but Get Right can't land the shot. It's a second round for Optic. And Rush with some incredibly well timed, well placed kills coming in, giving that round a chance to come back into the hands of Optic, and he took it perfectly. Then came Naf. Then you had all the other pressure being applied. Good stuff from Optic finally being shown here. Maybe that timeout just needing to mentally reset, but coming straight back in on this double AWP. It didn't pay out last time, but now, maybe with a better read towards the game, they could put it into a better place. Yeah, at least with the confidence that they built up over even just two rounds one. We feel a little bit comfortable taking some of the battles, getting into the swing of the match. Force going for the mid pick. And they're actually going to double peek it. That's nicely done. Mixwell and Naf, they both go for the peek, and Forrest can't figure out which one he wants to shoot at. So early advantage for Optic now. Exist has made his way out long. They know Daps is over towards Pit, but Rush, he does make the play, connects that spray down. Exist, he finds one kill. Can he get a second? No. Rush still holds strong, but it's a two on three. Rush has been a difference maker, but now down to 15 HP, limited to what he can achieve. But he can still be a nuisance. He can still gather the information if Get Right tries to make the play. If he puts a step out of line, if he doesn't try and check this corner, maybe there is more to be found here for Rush. We'll find out here in a second as Get Right is about to crest that corner, but looks away at the wrong timing, and Rush again strikes further. Three kills now. Huge impact from this man individually, leaving Freiburg in the 1v3. Going to try and make a cheeky play, get the info off the back. Spins back around now, knows that there's a player down by that little boost spot. 
As 57 seconds, but the bomb being at long is going to mean this is a literal uphill struggle here. It does take the first towards Stan, but now Mixwell and Rush should be able to play this one out smoothly. Should. Yeah, Rush has a pretty tough spot that would be difficult for Freiburg to figure out. 40 seconds left, and now since they know where Freiburg is and since they know they have the bomb down, Freiburg knows that even if he heads out towards long, he's got to be very slow and cautious if he's going to try and win this round. To be very careful of, of clearing all the angles because he knows they're going to be around that bomb. So it's just going to continue to run this clock down. So at a certain point, he's just going to have to start sprinting, and it's already about that point. Yeah, it's going to take a good five odd seconds to get towards the bomb at minimum. So down to 17, it is going to be a bit of a tough battle in hand. And it's going to be mixed well to greet him on the other side. So again, Optic, the double ops, mm, but I guess you could say actually did fare a good weight, especially at the start here, this double peak really just put Forrest right down at the start. Nothing more to be said about that, but lovely little bit of team play between the two. Yeah, good run for Optic right now. The unfortunate part is because NIP built up so much money, they've been able to buy throughout this entire losing bonus. Mm. They haven't had to save at all quite yet. And actually, even if they lose this round, it's, it's going to be very near uh, the full losing bonus for him. So another op in four's hands. The double op setup isn't in play. Naf has an M4. This time it's going to be a 2-1-2. Mixwell still toying with Forrest, and he actually, at least he gets the intel he gets away, he doesn't get picked off, but he has the intel that the op is in the hands of, uh, of NIP. Incredibly dangerous game to play, though. You will get bitten, yes. eventually. Mixwell, though, does eventually back away. He's like, all right, I've, I've, I've run my luck as far as it's going to go on this. I'm going to just step back now. Let's, let's play a different game here. So he's going to perch himself up towards short, watching to see if anyone comes his way. Pitt and Freiburg, the duo who cracked open long, will be trying to take that task on. Mixwell last time did manage to leg. I think it was get right on that play, but this time doesn't have the favor, so we'll back off. Watch the cross through instead. So slowly you can see NIP starting to take control throughout this map. And actually, I mean, two members devoted inside the B bomb site for Optic. They're going to be far in the way of rotation. So Daps and Mixwell have got to do some work. It is a two man setup at that A site, which we haven't seen much out of from Optic. Here comes that execute. Get right again, playing the lurking role, watching for those flanks. He's at the top of mid. Pit is brought down to 10 HP. And this has forced the aggression of this attack back. The last couple times we've seen this execute, two members have dropped down. They might not be able to do it here. This could be very tricky. Mixwell is not forced out of that position just yet. He has to turn, sure, but it still allows a lot of room to work. And look at it, Dab's already finding exists. This is going to mean NIP are going to try their luck elsewhere. Look towards the B side, look to exploit mid. Get right gets dinked down to 19. Not a great place to be. And these two players at B now actually have a very good shot into this round. And NIP looking like they're running out of options. They're down to 20 seconds. They're going to have to make a play quick or just back away from this. Yeah, uh, they're already out mid, so they're committed. That's a huge fight from Get right. Naf is going to be forced out. He does find a blind kill. Forrest, can he find it? He does with the op, and somehow this has turned around in NIP's favor. Optics stalled them out for so long, but they have since crumbled. Rush on the flank, B tunnels. Get right's very far away, and Rush knows this. He turns around, but it doesn't even seem like Rush wants to commit himself. He has to find Get right. He knows he doesn't want to get into that B bomb site in the one on one against Get right, so he's going to see if he can find him, but he can't. Three kills from Get right. That is an incredible round from NIP. That's game-changing play. That's round-changing play individually from Get Right. And that round looked all but lost to a degree. They won the battles over by B, but Get right was such an influential factor, almost negating any chance of a retake being built into that. But NIP, what a very slow and kind of studious play into that round. This is what you were saying earlier, that people maybe don't have that instant opinion of NIP when you think of them on their T side, but they are playing a more methodical style these days. Yeah, and even you, you can see, oh, nice, Forrest gets the pick on a stand, so that's going to help things. But yeah, even even when the methodical style breaks down, you can see they still have the individual skill in these players to make something happen out of nothing. Because make no mistake, that last round with 20 seconds left, they had absolutely no foothold into that round. They had no business winning in that kind of a situation, and they just get all the necessary kills in an instant. So NIP, we've seen the various faces of NIP so far, and it's given them a wonderful start into this 9-3, to three, of course, being the current scoreline. But again, Optic have been shown there is a little bit of a bite to their bark. It's not all talk, but this time, Forrest is having his way with them already, finding two, looks for his third, gonna be flashed up, but his Daps to stop the push towards short, goes back in for more, but he only has three bullets, has to back away, and the fight gets reset. It's a 3v4, so NIP still have the numbers as well. Yeah, I don't think NIP realizes though they've left the bomb all the way back in T spawn. So even if they make progress, they have plenty of time to go back and get it. I just don't think they realize it. And it might not even matter if Exist is just going to walk into the B bomb site. 
without the proper utility, a couple optic players are, are forced into weird peaks in middle to try and get some kind of information, and Force loves that. Now they go back and get the bomb on Get Right. He's going to wheel it back over towards the B bomb site, and there's a perfect setup in mid and lower B and the actual bomb site itself to ensure that he's going to have safe passage. And optics already bowed out. Rush and Daps are just going to try and save these weapons out towards long. And you said it perfectly. That crossfire in mid that was set in case they try to go for anything was absolutely perfect. So, again, NIP finding opportunities where it didn't seem they had many, to be honest. They had a bit of a rough trade towards Shaw. There was a couple of awkward moments, but then Forrest gifting them play back into this. And, of course, Exist wandering in towards B, finds a kill, and there you have it. Everyone else in the perfect spot to catch those plays through mid if required. But you can see them already hunting down these guns. They know optics. They're on the ropes at this point. The bummer for Optic is they, with that three-round streak, they had NIP at the point of breaking the economy finally, and that could have pulled us into a very close half. But it's gone the other way in these past two rounds, and even, I mean, NIP, they, they don't want to give any chance over to Optic. They're going to try and hunt down these weapons, at least sending one member, Forrest. He's going to be trying to find something. There's a peek from Rush, but he's just baiting. And Get Right finds Daps right through the box, and Forrest gets the last one. The classic combo, playing so well together. So, 10 to 3 now. And these opening shots and the follower he got as well, certainly pulling NIP in a very good direction. And, and the money, as you said, for Optic. They had the chance to break NIP in the earlier rounds after they went on a little bit of a hot streak for a very short time, but now they're back in the position of pretty much doom. They're down to clean USPSs apart from, I think it was one smoke there, and you got a little bit of something for Stanislaw, P250 in his hand, so really limited. But last time they did actually win one of these rounds, but they had a little bit more to play with. They had a bit of a different plan in mind, but it looks again like that mid-pressure they want to build here. Can you ask for it twice, though? I don't, I'm not sure it's probably... No. They, don't, they don't have the M4 they had last time, and I, they don't have any nades or anything to do any kind of flash. There's a pop flash for Freiburg. He can't land that kill, though. Naf's going to get it. He doesn't even take a point of damage. Forrest does get rushed, but a secondary member dinks him, but he gets his revenge. Stan falls as well, and now it's just down to Daps in the B-bomb site. Naf and Mixwell are going to be over towards Catwalk. They at least have an AK, but... With over a minute on the clock and no utility, NIP just does what they do best, and they slow things down in the mid-round, and they make sure they don't get punished by anything. Yeah, catching out Freiburg with his very, should I say, human reactions there at mid, not exactly being um, too above and beyond in that, but Mixwell now, your last man alive. I'm pretty sure they know kind of where he is, considering where Exist is looking. The flash already came out. He might have a little bit of a shot to take another rifle away, but... Beyond that, and still, even at this point, look how carefully they're playing this. They're in a 4v1 with everything they need, and they're still playing such a stoic game. And get right there, just puts his flag down in mid, claims it as his, and NIP break into such a devastating scoreline already, 11 to 3. It has to be so frustrating playing against that as well. And now, actually, on the last round of the half, this is where we're going to see the two auto snipers, Force and Pit, have one. Exist has the AWP. Just trying to do some damage, get a pick as they cross mid. We see it all the time. Enough money built up to make it work and see what they can get. It's, it's so, a, running the gauntlet, essentially. It really is. No one likes this game. Look at that sound. Already instantly holds them. Stanislaw and Naf don't want any of it, and they're going to have to try, and they do wait for finally those bullets to run dry down to 20 on the clip, then they can switch it out for anything else. The cool thing as well is Get Right was on his horse over towards the B bomb site. If there had been a pick, he more than likely would have gotten a little bit aggressive, knowing that w at least one member of the defense was out. He'd have a one-on-one -on -one or just a very late crossing for the defense. This is a little bit different, uh, different of a default for NIP. They don't have anyone out towards long. Two members in upper B, one in lower B, and one in mid, and then obviously... Forest all the way back in T-spawn with the AWP. So deciding where to go, but it almost, it almost looks like they've already decided to go towards this B-bomb site. Yeah. Bit of a game plan in mind. Freiburg being left as not necessarily the linchpin, but a, a play towards mid, keeping that rotator check. And now the CT side decides to get aggressive. The timing was a second off for NIP. They could have been facing that. They could have been perfectly ready, but no. Now they get them packed. Oh my god, packing, but Pitch just sprays and catches Naf as he tries to get away. And now here comes Freiburg into the mix. Finds the opportunity through mid. Can't get the follow-up. That could have been huge. And now we're left into a 3v2. You've got Forrest and Pitt left in this one. They've got 48 seconds. And there's no one really towards A here. Daps has got himself towards mid. Rush is watching that cross through as best he can. They're not too sure how quickly on that rotate we've seen the NIP guys go. But already, Daps is going to be the one to find them first if he waits this out. Yeah, and I don't think they have enough time on the clock to be as methodical as they'd like coming all the way to the other side of the map. And that's how Daps is able to pick off Forrest. And then Pitt just knows he has to be a little bit reckless in that last battle to try and get that kill to make something happen. But either way, off the back of that one force buy scenario after the timeout, Optic does rattle off four rounds towards the end of the half. But still, this is a huge lead for NIP, and it looked very decisive. 
In other situations, you'd argue in previous tournaments, Optics T side had been an impressive point to them, but this is again an incredibly hard task to come back around from. This is not the sort of scoreline you see teams build back from often, so it's a very, very much hard situation for Optic now to come back into. But for an IP, a great start here. So, guys, we'll be back after the break. Do stay tuned. in their first half in their debut at the, well, the major at this point. Their first showing in the groups, and it's looking pretty dominant, let's be honest here. Optic did go on a small run. A touch of hope was built, and it got ripped away pretty swiftly. Those three rounds seem like a long time ago now for any Optic fan, but there is room to be worked with here. Yeah, and now we'll get to see the, the, this defense, which is actually where the scary part is. The defense is now where you know the individual talent really starts to shine. When these executions come in for Optic, guys like Forrest have been playing lights out. Pitt has had some amazing rounds as well. So there, there's there's so many ways in which NIP has outplayed Optic. You, you've got to imagine there's not very many avenues. They need to get this hot start. They need to build some kind of momentum, and they need to put NIP on the defensive side, the more expensive side, as some kind of economic distress if they want to be able to come back into this. Yeah, a lot of win conditions now sit in front of Optic Gaming if they really want a shot at it. They have to tick so many boxes, but it's 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 possible. It's certainly not something you can ever you know look beyond. But again, NIP have been looking like they've pretty much been playing Optic like a fiddle. It's been walk into our game and we'll teach you how to play it pretty much at this point. But we are going to be getting underway in the second half. Let's see if Optic have anything left in the tank here. A great deal of utility to adapt. He's going to be playing that role, trying to set up the piece if required. However, on the other side, waiting ever so patiently will be those ninjas in pajamas. Optic very much sticking together. A 4-1 tactic is brought out. This is going to be a smoke for catwalk to block out any passage up cat from the T side. It blocks off double doors vision for these for the defenders. So Pitt's going to try and see if he can duck underneath that smoke and see some kind of angle. And actually, they're just going to drop down. They're going to come mid. They're trying to catch NIP off guard, but there's get right oh. Pitt right out of the air. Picks him off. Even Dap's getting the trade, but Force has obliterated the attack and nothing going for Optic. Daps in a one-on-three situation and a beautiful shot from Pitt. That was an absolute stunner. You don't get to see that every every day. That was that was pretty good. All right, Daps, 1v3. You've just seen your team being shredded apart. You got 56 seconds of Forrest in your way. If you know, you thought Pitt was good. You still got Forrest known for that pistoling ability, and he's going to make his mark into the round. So already NIP getting the first one on the board here in the second half in case it wasn't bad enough. And this, oh, it's just dirty. Get out of my face. <laughs> Nice round from Pitt. We mentioned a couple nice shots in the first half. That one was pretty impressive. And with this much of a deficit facing them, four to 12, Optic choose to buy into this round. They have Tech Nines, they have a Deagle on NAF, they have the Armor Rush as well, gonna buy up a little bit late into it, but I mean, they're, they're kind of going all in on this. They need to, they don't want NIP to stretch this lead out any farther than it is, but can they stop them? There's Pitt and Exist, or Freiburg, excuse me. He's in there as well. The nade from Pitt doing the damage, getting the assist. And I look at Santa's Law and Rush. They're, they're essentially already out of this round. Tail between their legs, desperately trying to run away. But on their trail is the NIP side. And already Rush going to try and take a quick fight towards mid. But get right away. Patiently pop flash over, goes back in. Didn't catch Rush, but doesn't need to. 
doesn't matter at all. Stan, you're one HP. Not sure how far you're going to get on this one. As it looks like Forrest is taking his time. He's being careful. The one bullet would have done the job. And there you have it. NIP, a clean round comes in. Sure, get right. Was on one HP, but they do the job anyway. Yeah, that's sick stuff. Now, Optic, they, they really don't have many options left available to them. So 4 to 13, they have to save into this one to give themselves any kind of a chance. So already they're going to go into the first buy round. Their first round with AK-47s won't be able to have an AWP unless they can get a plant. And they're just going to be saying, well, we have no mistakes to give for the rest of the half. So very daunting task ahead of them. Incredibly daunting. This is their debut, of course, here in the Major. So for them, they need to get a little bit going here. Hopefully we get to see more than this start. But it is looking like it's running on pretty much fumes at this point. Rush going to be trying to dash up short. Just going to try and work their way towards A. They've got a couple of flashes, so maybe going to try and bully whatever they can in. No armor, though. And, well, it looks as though they've more fought their own flashes than I think the counter flashes are coming out right about now. And again, it's an absolute slaughter. And NIP at the helm of that. It's just clinical at range. Uh, I mean, just nailing the very easy shots, not even letting them get to the corner. The, the FAMAS worked out perfectly for him. So now AK-47's out for Optic. This is their last chance to get back into this. Three smokes to work with, F just flashbangs behind that, so they're not gonna have any HEs, they're not gonna have Molotovs, those, those damaging nades that can force players from NIP out of position. They're gonna have to win a bunch of aim duels and that has not been going well for them throughout this match. You still have the SMG on Get Right as well. Wondering if he's going to try and take maybe a quicker fight, push the B tunnels, do something with it. He, he can take that fight. They have what they need to, and why not? Mixwell, though, has a brilliant chance and takes it. That's Fry Burgundy's just removed straight away from Long. That's going to force an instant reaction from Get Right and Forest. They have to reset this. They have to respect that sort of impact. But already, going to place one player towards short, two players on short. And Pitt going to have to put himself back. I'm not entirely sure what just what would happen. I think NIP maybe a little bit of miscommunication. Um, Something went wrong there, but Mixwell, uh, you know, on the good end of it, gets those two kills. There's a pick from Pitt. And now they've got to be really careful. They don't want to give this advantage up. If, if they give up a two-man advantage, that's just going to be so heartbreaking. They're going to hear him jumping up in the boxes. Here's Get Right pouncing. Can he get one more? Naff, he does. From a three-on-five <laughs> into a two-on-one so incredibly quickly. And Optic has got to be feeling heartbroken. They know where Mixwell is. They know he was out towards long. That's going to devastate you as a team. There's no two ways about it. Pitt seals the deal. And what a way to lose a round. You had the perfect start in. This is the difference, though. When Optic was on the CT side and they were in these kind of situations, they had all their players spread out across the map. No teamwork available. Everyone very individual. NIP, on the other hand, in a three on five, two players on catwalk, that at least allows them to work together to make some kind of aggressive play together. And Pitt getting that first opening kill was, was you know, the trigger for them to get aggressive, to come off catwalk and try and find those kills. And it works out perfectly for them. Uh, the triggering, indeed. 15 to four optic in in pretty much shambles at this point forcing everything they can to this round they have to go for it. there's no two ways about it but on the other side there's nip who have been exceedingly strong and showing extreme resilience to anything that's been shown towards them forest that getting a little bit of info to begin with but it's gonna be exist as well be in the guardian of mid just holding on to that get ryan forest over by b and optic trying to find any avenue of approach that will not result in them being absolutely destroyed and so far not achieving that yeah, there's no one there to trade that kill, no one there to try and do any kind of damage that exists. He gets even more information, just peeks the crack of that door, sees the scout. Nade doing some damage as well. Now Forrest has rotated out of the beef bomb site. It's a fight he normally likes to take, but Mixwell punishes him. But still, Optic hasn't really decided where they want to go. Everyone crowded to mid. Now they're going to come for this mid B split. Exists on top of the boxes, they spam it, but get right's on the other side. And now they're stuck between two NIP members. And it's easy again. Get right and exist, close things out. A quick end for NIP in their first match, 16 to 4. A merciful destruction of Optic there from NIP. Put them out of their misery pretty quick. And really for Optic, that map was something that all of us kind of uh, gave us a bad taste in our mouths, let's say that, say the very least. There was hope, there was, there was <clears throat> excuse me, there were opportunities, you'd argue, for Optic in other situations. Dust2 wasn't one of those. The win conditions were so far and few between that it just never seemed to pay out for them. Yeah, they, they, I mean, the first half is just so suffocating, right? I mean, how do you get back into that? Even with the miracle force buy that they had, where we even, it almost seemed like a tilt buy. It was just one M4 bot. They come up away with that, but they could never break the economy. And NIP, they just had so many chances to get the momentum back in their favor. And that, that's really where it ran away. And then obviously the three on five was that last ditch attempt. Uh, and, and that just didn't work out for Optic whatsoever. Yeah. 
going to have to be a hard reset for uh, Optic following off the back of this one. A bit of a, a bit of a blistering start, though, for NIP. And a lot of people have put them as they're not necessarily dark horses, but certainly looking to see how far they can go in this tournament. There's a lot of uh, raised eyebrows around that recent performance in 2016, I guess we can say. But anyway, good stuff from Na'Vi, good stuff from NIP in the first couple of games we've seen today, and of course the ones prior to that. So I guess no upset so far. But there's still games to come, so guys, do stay tuned. There'll be more games after this.